Today is obviously the start of a new season, but I think a lot of people can look at it, look at it as the start of something that's so much bigger, new chapter and kind of where this club is headed. How excited are you just for the grand scheme of what today represents? Yeah, today is really exciting. Opening day is always great in any sport, to be at home, to be in the sunshine, uh, to be playing the Washington Spirit for a lot of different reasons is exciting for us as a club. For me personally, coming in in the middle of last year, it's fun to be at the beginning of the season as the GM, uh, just to see things through and know what the off season was like for this club. And I would say also as a fan, you know, from 2013 till now, I've, I've, I've watched this club evolve and most importantly, watched the league evolve into something much bigger than it started as, which is exciting for everybody. How cool is it to be the Seattle Reign again and kind of go back to those roots? Yeah, it's, you know, I think it's everything for the players, especially the ones that have been here a long time, especially for Laura, who was here in the beginning, uh, to go back to not just playing in Seattle, but being identified with the city of Seattle. I just think it, it's going to help our brand. It's going to help our identity globally. It's going to continue to help us uh, bring attention to why we love the city so much and why the city loves football so much. Um, both footballs, but yeah. soccer. And I, again, when you're talking international football, international soccer, uh, Seattle does stick out as being a soccer city globally. Um, you know, and so for us, it's, it, it's gonna be really helpful in retention, um, recruitment, when it comes to the roster. And in terms of attracting local fans, it's gotta be pretty helpful that now people look at this team as, you know, a staple of a local community and maybe not, you know, something on the surface that has, I guess, you know, direct roots to a yeah. different country. Yeah, yeah. It's, I, think, I think being tied to the city is really, really important. But I would also say that the evolution of the club is important too. You don't ever want to forget your history and where you've come from. And I think just, you know, again, you look around the league and maybe clubs that are expansion clubs that are sort of invested in initially and they're getting you know put into the league kind of with a head start if you will but not not really in, in my estimation going through everything this club has gone through you know from ownership to different to foreign ownership to moving to cheney to from memorial to coming back to lumen into the city those are growing pains but i think necessary i think challenges and obstacles and going through different levels of um sort of I don't know, challenges within the franchise are what makes us us. And we can't ignore those things. And you don't have to look at them as negatives necessarily. You just look at them as part of what your history is and what's in your fabric, which mm -hmm. is a grittiness and ability to adapt and um, one that has made us the club that we are. But to go back to the crest is timely uh, and it, it's extremely important, I think, to the players, especially the ones that have been here a long time mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. to the city. Yeah. Um, are, you, are you surprised that kind of this rebranding was able to happen when the ownership stuff is still in, you know, unknown? Yeah, I think that, I, I think everyone behind the scenes, and again, a little above my pay grade that's yeah. been involved in the sale, um, they recognize the importance of timing, the importance and the amount of work that goes into a rebrand, uh, the, I think the effect that it has on everybody from ticket sales to the players themselves to the fan base when you're trying to switch midstream or when you don't plan out, I think everyone involved, uh, the league in particular, recognized that the timing, it had to be before the season started. So the sale I think had been announced last April. So for it to be going on that long to change back was the, the right thing to do. So I'm thankful that that decision was made. You, you mentioned that this might be a little bit, you know, even above your pay grade, the whole ownership thing, but what do fans need to know about where that process is at at this point? Yeah, I think we're as close as, as we've been. I think it's, it's coming any time now. Uh, it's been a process. We're you know, a month away from the year mark of when the sale was announced. I know everyone's ex you know, really anxious to get it done and to sort of be over that next hurdle. Uh, so it, it'll happen. I think the, the most important thing is to look around the league with expansion, with the investment going in, um, to all of the clubs in the NWSL that the excitement around what that looks like for us as an original club in the league in the future is, is the part that I think everyone can't wait for. So the anticipation has been um, <laughs> huge and we'll get there. Uh, right now, we've, as, as the general manager in charge of the first team, 
my focus has been to help the players and help the technical staff stay focused on preparing and winning games. Uh, you know, regardless of who's writing the paychecks, um, the biggest thing is that we need to perform, and their focus has been on that. And I'm hopeful that today, all the hard work and the preseason and whatever distractions we have had or whatever they've been able to sort of block out comes to fruition for us on the field today. Was it not really of an off season for you, just given the turnover that you know you expected this club to face? You no, know, Rapino, Lavelle, Sonnet, yeah, and, yeah. and trying to replace their production. Oh, 100%. And, and the and the sale piece because then you're juggling staff that don't know what their future looks like and what the investment looks like. So that retention and recruitment of new staff. We had to go out and get a new goalkeeper coach, a high performance coach, a medical director. So my time was spent on those things, including the roster and. Um, that started way before the season ended, but I've, I've learned, and again, new GM, rookie GM, uh, that off-season doesn't exist for any GM, whether you're new or not. That time of the year is uh, when things are really uh, flying. I mean, it was, it, was, it was busy. So now is maybe the time where, I don't want to say you get to relax, but you maybe get to sit back a little and appreciate the product that you have on the field. How do you think this team stacks up compared to the talent that was here maybe last year. Yeah, even just watching opening day yesterday and watching the Challenge Cup final between Gotham and San Diego, I don't think anyone really knows. I think, and I've been through a lot of college seasons myself as a coach, and you, you prepare and everyone thinks their preseason's going great, and then you stick your team out on the field, and there's usually a little bit of chaos until teams start to settle in and figure out who they really are. The thing I'll credit our technical staff with, and Laura in particular, is that she, it, it, that is her strength. She knows how to build a team on the field really, really quickly. Uh, the players that, in conjunction with her, that my associate GM and I went out and sought um, as replacements or additions or re-signings were ones that we knew she could build a really good team around, a competitive team, because after all, winning is what we want to do and what we're about. So um, I sit back and relax, I'm not quite sure, but definitely sit back and enjoy the fruits of everyone's labor, including the players during preseason uh, and what they've done in the offseason to prepare themselves for a, a really long NWSL season. Today's just the beginning. It's a long haul. So we'll go for the, the marathon, not the sprint. But at home in the sun, you hope we get out of the gates the right way. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Laura, how important was, you know, her contract situation just to represent, you know, stability for the club and obviously she's a well-known face in this league. It was huge, to be honest. Like, if we didn't know when the sale was coming, who the owners were going to be, where that status was, um, with free agency going on at the same time, one of the things that, that was a huge positive was making sure that players that we were trying to attract and sign and re-sign knew who our coach was going to be. And because of Laura's reputation, it made it at least a little bit easier on us to, to replace some of the players that we lost and to gain who I feel are some really, really talented players that the city and I think our fan base are going to fall in love with. With Lou Barnes, I know she's always been, you know, a leader, super well respected in the locker room, but maybe her forte wasn't being, you know, a vocal leader and, and leading in that capacity. Do you feel like without Megan now that she kind of has to step into that role? I think I think Lou's role is going to be Lou's role, um, what, it's, what it's been for 12 years. You know, she's a connector. She's someone when Jess and Pino were off on international duty, not that she didn't want to go on international duty, but she's been here. Um, she's always been with the club through the Olympics, through the World Cups, and so uh, she's that connector with the group. Most importantly, and if you talk to Jess and Lou both, what they would say is their roles in the locker room and on the training field and on the competition field has been to mentor the young players to becoming leaders themselves and teach them how and empower them to lead, mm -hmm. which from a distance or even now kind of being on the inside, I've been able to watch how they've handled uh, some of the, the players that are in year two and three or even some of the more veteran players like a Sofia Huerta or a Bethany Balser who have really stepped up and are not necessarily quiet leaders, but coming into their own leadership style with some of the new players on the roster, whether they're old or young, but new to the club. Uh, so I think Lou and Jess, I think that's what they do a really good job of is empowering others to be them and to have a voice within the team and to show up and help them be the best they can be on the field and off. How impressive is both of their longevity? I mean, this, this is not an easy sport to no. you know, play no, for a really long it's time. Not. It's impressive. 
And I think, you know, the, the, the better we build the roster around them, um, the better job our, our technical staff and Laura do of balancing what that looks like over an eight month season, what their off seasons look like, how we, our medical staff and our high performance staff um, dictate, you know, what physical output they're, they're having to do and, and balancing that is, uh, is, is how they've been able to last so long and then them personally and how they've taken care of themselves. It's, it's impressive. Um, in this sport in particular. So, uh, you know, I, I give kudos to everyone, but to the players mostly themselves. It is, is not, no easy task. It, it takes its toll yeah. for sure. How has uh, retirement been going for Megan? Well, if you, if you follow the gram, it looks like she and Sue are doing just fine. <laughs> so they look like they're having a pretty good time. And uh, I saw her probably a month ago. She was out of her boot and she okay. says the Achilles is doing great and they've, they've really you know, between appearances and then other things they've been invited to and just vacation and whatnot, um, I think I think they're doing just fine. And um, uh, the thing that's probably most impressive about both of them and what they garnered in their careers, Sue and Megan both, uh, is that they just continue to have impact in so many different ways that it's, um, you know, we all just owe them a debt of gratitude, not just in women's soccer, but in women's sports and for women in general. Just. They represent so much and they're so impactful in so many ways. It's, it's fun to watch. I'm, I'm excited for both of them to kind of just follow this next bit. Have there been conversations about what Megan's next role looks like within you know, the scope of the reign? I think there have been some conversations. Again, I haven't necessarily been in on, on them. And you know, we've said this from the get-go is however Megan wants to be involved in this club, she's always going to be welcome to be involved. I, I know that for a fact. So what that looks like moving forward, I think we'll probably know sooner than later. By the way, I do follow the gram and I saw that both of them were at South by Southwest in Austin, which is, <laughs> I live for three years in Austin. I love, I love yeah. that event. Um, Alan, you got anything else? You think I'm missing anything? Was there anything else you wanted to talk about that we didn't touch on? I don't think so. I just, we're really excited to debut some of our new players today. And I, I again, I think this, club um, is really excited for the city of Seattle uh, to start to turn out for them and fall in love with the players we have and to appreciate what it is that they put on the field because I get to watch them every day at training and it's special. Yeah, they're impressive. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Leslie, Jake. Thanks so appreciate much. it. Really appreciate yeah. you.